so I, uh, I misplaced my monster hat, which is why I've now turned traitor and had to put on the Red Bull Flugtag team hat for now. But I wanted to talk about a bit of a serious topic today. Now, I want to start by saying that I'm not trying to be a warmonger or a doomsayer or anything like that. But I'm going to give you my honest opinion and my honest beliefs of what I believe is the truth. There's been a lot of talk lately about how civil war is inevitable. There's been a lot of talk lately about how civil war should or shouldn't happen. It's gonna happen or it's not gonna happen. Um, as far as what I think about it, At the same time, I, in different ways, sort of do and don't want it to happen. And here's what I mean by that. I'm sure you've all seen memes before about, oh, the uh, fat guys who can't run a mile talking about how they're ready for civil war, right? No, that, that's, that's not me. I don't make any, I don't have any delusions about being ready for any kind of combat, um, given my physical state. I don't have any delusions about how I would be useful in a combat role in, or really any kind of role in, 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 any, in, in, in any kind of warfare scenario. At best, I could be logistical support, but, you know, it's whatever. See, here's the thing. I don't want a civil war to happen. But what I do want is for freedom and basic civil liberties and basic human rights, basic constitutionally enshrined inborn rights to exist 10, 20, 30 years from now. There, there was a lot of talk for a while about all the Q stuff, the Q and on this, Q and on that. And at this point, a lot of people agreed that was all bullcrap. It was never true. It was made up. It was a fantasy. Q was basically a fantasy made up by people to avoid the bitter truth of reality. Donald Trump wasn't that bad of a president, in my opinion, but he sure as hell could have done a better job, in my opinion. Now, granted, I think part of it's not his fault... All the impeachment nonsense that went on for, like, what, three years or something like that? Stupidity. Ma-Russia. Ma-Russia. Like, three years or something like that of it. At least a year, two, whatever. However long it was. Every single where you turn. Blocked. Is Donald Trump an idiot? Well... I think the answer is yes and no. Uh, I think the way that a lot of people, a lot of uh, TDS, never Trumpers, idiots think that he is, is not true. I don't think he's an idiot in the business sense. But here's where I think Donald Trump's main failing was. He didn't know how to pick his people. At the same time, he wanted to be an island and do everything by himself. But whenever he did trust somebody or bring somebody into his circle... It was damn near always the wrong person. <sighs> From Kushner to, um, oh, what is the guy's name? Brett, Brett something, like Brennan, Brennan, something like that? I don't know. Not Bannon. I'm thinking of the, the first, uh, like, Secretary of Defense he put in, the warmonger. I can't remember his name. I'm blanking. But, yeah, Trump's pretty bad at, at picking his people to be around. 
he was he was too naive in my opinion in terms of who he trusted I mean you gotta trust somebody sometimes but I think he just picked the wrong people to trust and they put even worse people around him he followed their advice and look where it got us look where it got him <laughs> but all the Q stuff right oh the CIA secretly on Trump's side oh the 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 there's all these white hat actors in the deep state that are secretly on Trump's side. It was never it was never real, right? It was just a fantasy that people made up to avoid coping with reality, which is that, you know, as much as I like Trump and a lot of the things he did, man, I have just as many criticisms of him as I do positive things to say at this point. But at this point, we pretty much can all agree that Q was a cope, in the literal sense of the word. It was people coping with harsh reality by making up this story about how all these deep state CIA actors were really on Trump's side the whole time. No, no, no. It was a literal cope. But it was, it was hopeless and baseless optimism. People looking for a bright side that just wasn't going to come, for a solution that just wasn't going to come. Just baseless optimism when I look at people telling me that freedom can exist 20 years from now through legal process through elections through court battles when people tell me there is any legal process by which freedom can exist 20 years from now to me, personally, that's the new Q. That's the new LARP. That's the new COPE. That's people who don't want to accept the bitter reality. That the United States of America, as we think we know it, hasn't existed for almost a century, for one thing, and sure as hell is not going to exist in any recognizable form 20 years from now if we stick to what's legal. Now, I'm not advocating directly or calling for anything illegal, mind you. But when I see people talk about, oh, there's been war talk, right? I was watching Uncivil Law. Somebody in this chat said, I see a lot of war talk. I think it's an unhealthy mindset. Okay? Look, I'm not trying to step on any toes or call out any names here, but when I see people like Uncivil Law and his chatters and just people that I know in real life, my family, people on the internet, talking about, oh no, you can't do civil war, that's bad. It's redcoats. All I see is redcoats, man. My family, uncivil law, his chatters, might as well all change their names to Benedict Arnold, as far as I'm concerned. Because they're the people who would have said, no, you can't go to war against the British. For one thing, it's hopeless. For another thing, it's it's wrong. It's not legal. The United States of America wasn't founded on legality. Well, it was founded on legality. It wasn't founded legally, okay? I don't know if you guys knew this, but much like how there's a, a part of our Constitution says that states can't secede, or at least there's no legal method for them to secede, it's kind of muddy, I guess, but... The general consensus is that it's illegal for uh, one or more states to secede from the Union, right? Under, like, federal law, statute, constitution, whatever it is. Generally accepted that it's illegal for states to secede or revolt against the federal government. Revolting against the government is generally illegal as itself. Um, you might also be aware that uh, during the time of the British Empire and colonial America, it was also illegal for the colonies to secede from the crown and form their own country. So, uh, you know... If you live in the United States of America, and you live under the ostensible protection of the U.S. Constitution, and you are not a subject of the British Crown as a result of living in the United States, 
Um, you are that way because some people did some very illegal things to what was at the time their central national government. So yeah, is there a legal method for freedom to exist for the Constitution to matter 20 years from now? Is there a legal method to have that happen? I hope so. But I don't think so. I would love to be proven wrong. I would love for Robert Barnes' fantasy of local elections working their way up, trickle up uh, freedom to work its way up into the federal government. I would love to see that happen, guys, but... I can't imagine it happening in the real world. Again, much like Q, any talk of legal methods for freedom and constitutional rights existing at all 20 years from now, I see it as, as just cope. Baseless optimism. Something that people are telling themselves so they can sleep at night. And I'd love to be wrong. I really would. I know a lot of people see talk of civil war and secession as being very unhealthy. I just disagree. I just disagree, guys. It's just a difference of opinion. I see the anti-civil war, anti-secession talk as unhealthy because I see it as an unhealthy coping mechanism. See, coping mechanisms can be healthy or unhealthy. The unhealthy kinds are when you refuse reality, when you refuse to perceive reality, right? Working with reality is a healthy coping mechanism. Refusing to perceive reality at all is an unhealthy coping mechanism. So to me, the peace talk, the anti-secession talk, the anti-civil war talk, if you ask me, it's either an unhealthy coping mechanism that involves denying basic reality, or it's people who are just fine with freedom not existing. One of the two. I mean, again, I could be wrong. It could be neither. Perhaps there is a legal method, even theoretically possible, let alone feasible in the real world. Maybe that's the case. I just don't see it. Well, anyway, this is North Sea Hero, signing out.